And also attend uh, assistant professor in electrical engineering and computer science department. Um, today I will be talking about the role of OPC in life sciences. And uh, if you see the asking for questions, uh, so any questions, just uh, type in the chat box and um, Daniel will read the question to me and answer it. So feel free to ask me any questions at slide. Um, so, um, uh, as you know, HPP is getting into every fields right now, uh, and it's making a major impact in life science. Uh, one of the fields uh, traditionally um, they didn't use computing um, to solve bigger problems, uh, but today they're using more and more. Power to solve the problem. And I'll just think about the applications that we develop and all of them in type of form and so on and so forth, and how the big problems of using different computers. These will be the highlights of the topic. Talking about the problem based solution, the basis that we need um, for um, solving these problems. And some results and new practical um, stories and uh, science highlights uh, in this area with uh, search at next. Uh, so, as as you know, uh, there's an exponential growth in economic data, uh, mainly because of next sequence in technology. So, initially, it took about, uh, more than 10 years and uh, about Three billion dollars. So that's a big human genome project. Uh, yeah. So, and uh, was high because of the, the technology for sequencing was really expensive at that point in time. You can sequence um, about few genomes. Um, at the cost of 5,000 per genome, uh, per, per genome. Uh, and with the next generation, with the second generation technology, uh, you can use um, a human genome every hour um, at 1,000. So pretty much um, you can see the exponential uh, their growth in genomics. And um, this is much bigger than um, any growth in computation. So, slides that crossing power in every eight months. But genomic is a doubling every six months. And this rate will go down with this new system uh, technology, next in system technology. Um, we'll be here maybe like maybe in four months or five months, uh, but it's very soon uh, we will to see this uh, sequence of technology. Uh, so as you can see here, um, experimental design in red and sequencing top in um, blue, and you have this uh, analysis in uh, yellow, right? Uh, so, initially, like 10 years back, there's a huge cost in the sequencing technology. That's why you see that blue right there, right? Um, but now, the cost of sequencing technology has gone down, but uh, the downstream analysis where users have gone up to the I mean, it will be so low. Uh, the expert setup would be high, but you see huge. Which fellow that the downstream is quite expensive. So if we a thousand dollar genome, a hundred dollars an hour. That is uh, the problem that we are facing. This is because most of the mathematics applications is that is not for um, just desktop or small clusters, uh, and on a small 
scale. So they don't arise on a very large scale. So it's a major problem in this now. And, and scientists and biologists are catching up uh, with this data growth. Uh, and and traditional like physics or chemistry, they acquire plants and they've been using computers for a while ago. Um, but it's still catching up um, with the uh, data growth. So the solution for this is well. The solution is developing highly parallel applications um, that go to hundreds of thousands of goals uh, to solve problems. That's what we know now. And also develop efficient modules uh, and algorithms uh, to actually assemble uh, this data. So you a high sequence that generates about four terabytes of data. Uh, um, and it, it is throwing out uh, gigabases of sequence data. And uh, you need to assemble that using various sense assembly algorithms. And uh, that requires high memory. Because algorithms that you can take away, uh, there are more memory than So it's like they need high memory. So we are going to modify these algorithms. And they can run on these so various efforts that are going on right now with um, developing algorithms uh, to scale well on various uh, um, and accelerator, uh, conventional hardware and uh, accelerator architectures. So um, that's, that's where we are contributing uh, the software. Modules. Most of the biologists, uh, they don't want time developing parallel code or uh, running scripts uh, on people's computers. Uh, like often, board. So, we are trying to develop science kits where you have a nice web interface and user can upload the data, uh, identify the um, by nice application that he wants to use and hit a uh, submit button after he takes the parameters and that submits uh, his job on the supercomputer from the back end. I'll talk more about it uh, in later slides. Uh, and also we want to develop automated workflow uh, which fits in the science data so that users can use multiple applications to build um, each biological models. I'll talk here and down the uh, you know, slides. Not all uh, databases to host this data, uh, which is in the terabytes, uh, and we, so that we can either can go in and grab it if you like or if you want for the analysis. So these are the solutions uh, that we can work with to solve exponential data growth or do the cat of this data. Uh, we have various supercomputers uh, that we use. Um, we use backend predominantly, which is um, backend of our um, science gateways. Uh, it uh, is around 12,000 people know about backend. Uh, but for uh, IT sequence assembly, we use models. So, not just has four terabytes of shared memory, uh, so we use um, the shared memory to assemble large genomes anywhere from human genomes to meta -genome, uh, for metagenomic analysis uh, and also for large plant genomes and other organisms that are bigger in this supercomputer to do large scale assembly. And also, on the other hand, machine analysis. Where you require uh, large memories, polyphenic rebuilding, uh, or a multiple sequence alignment, uh, we use um, this specific supercomputer for uh, those applications. And we also use Beacon, which has these Intel Beyond and Beyond 5 cluster, uh, about um, 117. Uh, and small cluster, but uh, it has about 250 uh, 
to buy for for no which we can use uh accelerated like beyond five we have the bottom. Um, Docker, um, it's an array machine, it's an XC that the eyes here. Uh, it's about quarter of um, the province, it has about a thousand cores um, that you can use for downstream analysis. So these are the various uh, computing platforms we use at uh, NICS for doing downstream analysis in life science applications, uh, especially for next-gen sequencing and the downstream analysis. And also, we do some virtual screening for drug recovery. So, uh, highly scalable problem is graph. Uh, and we such a way that we can use most of uh, the data power applications, not only by informatics, but any other informatics application, uh, which have large amount of data and which needs to be distributed across hundreds of thousands of cores uh, to solve a bigger problem. We can use this wrapper, uh, which has an efficient I.O. Uh, modules and uh, do load balancing, uh, dynamic load balancing um, for uh, distributing the work. And also developed from fault tolerance and checkpoints and parts to choose wrapper more optimized. Um, so these are wrapper architecture uh, where you can see uh, there's a one main uh, one which acts as a master node and which is the part of moving data from the file system uh, to local memory on that node. Along it also Databases and the uh, input query onto the your uh, nodes, and then this might be responsible for distributing work uh, to all the workers uh, down the master worker uh, kind of uh, approach. And all workers work on various applications. Uh, we did not change any functionality of uh, Blast or Hammer. Or Toxic or muscle. Uh, these are all native code uh, like we use in the iBlast or a Genesis Hammer. But the only change is around it for efficient load balancing. And these buffering techniques um, uh, to uh, stage the output data in the memory of each worker and one output data. Uh, we compress it and push it to the next uh, buffer, uh, and we take this compressed data and move it across uh, to the buffer system. So, with this efficient um, data movement, we could scale to thousands of cores um, on uh, tracking. So, the job we ran, and it scales fairly well to 100,000 cores. The so pitch scaling and so so does Hummer. Uh, you see a quite flat line uh, from 1,000 cores to 100,000 cores, um, which shows um, scaling. Uh, this small peak here and there because, um, um, like at that time, somebody else was using, uh, especially at 16,000 cores, there were other high intensity applications. So uh, but it's fairly flat line. So this is how we achieve good skill, uh, efficient load balancing and uh, I don't uh, So so far it's clear. Does anybody have questions? No. Okay. No questions. So so as if, uh, they're using various applications, and we have similar applications, um, for muscle, and we're using uh, next-gen um, assembly algorithms like Velvet, um, Galaxy, um, Galaxy, uh, Velvet, uh, assemblies like Altad, um, 
like the example data tools. I'll talk uh, now more about scientists, why do you scientists? Just as like the biology focus on the next time, and you have the opportunity to um, the job or writing job. Uh, highlighting the code. Um, so you can take the time and be efficient uh, in the research to solve bigger problems, right? So we are developing this sign base, um, web, uh, any sign base, so that a biologist can log in, upload data, and get application and parameters and get them button. And it summons the data for him. So, uh, and then job is sent to the supercomputer from the application server, and it runs. Oh, it, it looks more like this. Like, like. So you have to say, uh, and then, then the chief data is like this. And parallel module is behind it. Um, so these are the glass. Or muscle or any assembly algorithm or other thousand people in algorithm or a supercomputer, this could be on. And uh, it could be on not be on any of the machines. And um, we are also working on connecting these back end to XP resources. So we're going to try to install all these applications. On various um, resources like Black Live and to run analysis for the users. But the data, uh, once it runs to the file, just um, the data is uh, processed, um, and all data is then part of the part in the tool, uh, and then it's um, Data is sent back to the application server, and the email will be sent to the um, you saying, "Hey, your data is here. You can just go download your data uh, from here and start your analysis." So, building um, this database is where you can hold hold the uh, raw data and also the past data that you can pull from the um, parsers. And filters and so on and so forth. And the user has full control of all these applications in the web portal where he can uh, come with this application, um, and, up and get his results back. So we're trying to make it as simple as possible for all of to use this interface. So it will look more like this. You the popular, popular and for for uh, petascale like science applications and research. So the user needs to register and log in, and once he logs in, he says, "All right, we have a data test. In data test, we have two um, applications." Uh, uh, like parsers, um, and then we have last summer and muscle, and by math, by and so many, uh, and, uh, and then we are trying to build this gateway for this. So we add other things uh, to this um, here. So we have mathematics, maybe chem mathematics, where we have various virtual streaming applications for drug discovery. And then we can even have chemistry or physics applications, um, which goes by here. Uh, basically, these science gateways will help uh, non traditional techniques uh, to launch jobs at massive scale. Uh, and the various all transfer mechanisms in grid to transfer data from the used local desktop machine uh, to the um, application server, from application server to the supercomputer. So uh, we are working on various uh, transfer.
So, it, like, it was like So, if you take the application uh, and run, uh, so you can also build um, these automated workflows now in the, in the future where you can take multiple applications and you can connect them using various partial tools that are available to develop uh, an automated workflow to for large scale analysis. So here, you are using uh, applications like Hammer, Glass, and Muscle uh, in with partners and uh, databases to build protein domain models to identify new domain models and also to see how, how the domain models have sense to obey using this uh, workflow which is uh, published in one of my journals. Um, so from here, I will talk more. This is more on the back end application side. So now I'll talk more about how we're able to use these applications uh, to solve big problems, right? And what are these big problems? How, how do they look like? Uh, what various types of stories? Um, so we start with this. Um, uh, this is a growth site in Arctic. Um, so signs are going to various uh, Parts of this drill site, and then taking soil samples uh, to identify how the permafrost, which is 20% of the earth crust, is uh, changing. So it changes um, the gases emitted out, so it also impacts global warming. So scientists are studying how various samples from a few years back or how to change. How the real world is changing in various uh, sites. So we take the entire soil sample and we sequence it. So we don't sequence a single genome. But we sequence the entire all the entire tissue in that soil sample, right? So this is metagenomics. So this is metagenomics, uh, and we not the supercomputer to assemble data. Uh, for research, and then we can identify what are the various sorts of genes expressed and so on. Uh, so, this, uh, we got an allocation of 300,000 hours uh, units on not plus uh, 500 to 600 gigabytes for every home. Uh, so, Assemble quite uh, quite a large data for data using Nautilus and great like uh, so each run then there's about four terabytes of raw data then signal data image data and so on for for one experiment uh, set uh, and once you assemble terabytes. Uh, this will be 400 device, and once you actually finally assemble into all contexts and uh, uh, various sequences, um, it reduces uh, from 400 to maybe about 40, any uh, 10 to 40 gigabytes. So there is a huge data reduction from the high speed uh, one sequencer uh, to uh, actually the sequence. Assembled. So we need this assembled data, which we can now use to divide uh, from genes and proteins and start to become seen and all of this. Uh, all, all the various applications of running sequence searches, similarity searches, uh, building uh, alignments, um, finding secondary structures, and uh, and then from there going down to building phylogenetic trees and so on and so forth. Um, we use the down like here is an example where you're trying to identify uh, thermal stabilization 
tell you uh, this another part where uh, uh, values are degraded to so our collaborator was using Python uh, Linux tool, which was uh, known for lowly independent units of structure, uh, which was written in Python, uh, and he was a he was in all this time. So we took Linux code in Python and um, um, everything in C, and we got all that. Um, so it went on 400 hours up to about 30 hours per run. We scaled that uh, to, uh, we're scaling on track and, uh, to do multiple uh, or in the order of 100,000 of these customers at the same time doing um, large scale analysis. So we are, we are using our parallel wrapper to wrap this code and run on a very large scale. So this shows the importance of computing in So most of the applications are written for desktop clusters, trying to support them to next generation operations. So as um, um, we were able to um, identify domain models for hundreds or 10, like, like it was 100 million for one hour, and I think it's about 10 million of proteins, domain models we can identify in humans. I think 98,000 folks on track, and then this was published. Um, uh, so we are going from days and months of calculation to hours. Uh, this are, um, 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 if I domain model for the entire uh, database uh, to see uh, how the protein domains power um, a protein space. And this work initially on clusters, it took a few months, but we were able to do um, crossing using track and in uh, So it's months to the end of the analysis. And published um, in the moment. So this one, um, like my personal thing, personalized Um, like maybe maybe five ten years down the lane, um, when you go to a hospital, they're not going to take your brain urine for testing. So they're going to Put a small amount and sequence our genome and identify what proteins or genes are expressed in the matter of, like, let's say, minutes to less than an hour, uh, and um, what kind of illnesses you have right now, and uh, what diseases you might get years or down the lane. And, and, and uh, like uh, changing your lifestyle now so, so that we can prevent diseases in the future. More preventive medicine. And also, they will be able to design drugs uh, which be more focused per genome, so per individual. So uh, on the person's genotype and phenotype, it's all they use drugs that is more personal to a single person or a small group of individuals uh, rather than this common uh, one medicine for all kind of um, process, right? When you have a cancer, everybody goes to a set of chemotherapy to kill um, tumors and uh, stuff like that. But the lane will be more like a deep life. It, it, it can, they're like Many of us cancers, but everybody in the same treatment. But, so this, this the focus on a small group, or even to almost down to an individual for drug discovery. So there are many stages in drug, drug discovery. Most of the time, most of the time is 
10 h1 where they do a lot of complex for uh, work virtual screening uh, and we can solve for providing five actually from the same dot on in an expert or a different working. Uh, so one of my collaborators was working on uh, the stone algorithm on subtext and it takes about uh, three months uh, for him to draw for fucking 1.5 million compounds uh, of small molecules onto the ovarian cancer protein. And um, he, he used to dock it in five different combinations that he was involved to take. He rotated it in five different angles and tried to see at five different he wants to dock these small molecules. Uh, to see the dog or not. So he has the millions of compounds that he wants to gain a single protein and how they are docking. So it takes about three months because he's using flexible docking for his lichen and dock in a site. Uh, and we um, three months on a 256 core uh, cluster and so we that problem um like other for track and hardware and just the optimization we got a twenty eight data um using various compiler flags and so on and so forth. And we use our talent module, the towel wrapper to tell it to ten thousand cores um and beyond. So we we used um, about eight thousand cores uh, to run the same one compound mm -hmm. on this one protein, and we were able to finish the computation in forty minutes compared to three months, right? So forty three months to forty minutes, and he wanted to identify for the entire pathway. So he had a seven protein, seven. I can make five runs, three runs, so it's like it's uh, it's a lot of like high to years just to compute on a cloud, which is very good. So we took that, we gave him confirmation for five proteins, five different confirmations about like four or five data in one week. So years of computation, of computation. So he's taking mind to process the analysis like which came out of various tools uh, for this uh So he's taking mind to analyze the analyze data. So that we're trying to dive in and also double down parses so that the researcher can Identify the key compounds very quickly rather than spending a lot of time again to process the terabytes of data on his local desktop or on a cluster located uh, in his community. So we are developing the parallel part of the application uh, to the data quite fast. So these are examples where we have. Had progress um, in practice work um among other uh, applications like we also catalyzing Autodoc Nina uh, and some of our collaborators use Autodoc Nina to dock um, even billions of compounds on uh, supercomputers like uh, Kraken or Titan which uh, is located uh, for example, um, this uh, researcher, Dr. Mandy from ESC, went to the South Carolina, he's trying to use uh, three dimensional CD scan. So, this scan uh, the entire organ clear, uh, and they're trying to take this, like, thousand images and build a 3D model. 
uh, a vascular tree for an organ. So they take a part um, of a rabbit and do CT scans and before the vascular tree so, is running the application on its desktop, uh, which has about 256 gigabytes of memory, but to be able to actually build a 3D model uh, in that much memory. So we took that and put it on Nautilus supercomputer, and we were able to build uh, models uh, at the rate of like, uh, using Visit, uh, which is a visualization uh, application on Nautilus, is one terabyte of memory, about a um, quarter of uh, not to run this one. So we built this uh, vascular tree so that the researcher can actually use a printer and print this tree and compare it to the real vascular tree of an organ. Uh, in this research can be used uh, organ so if somebody needs uh, and they don't have to wait for the donor guy or somebody else um, get from some place, so they really take the battery of the sales part and print this on for uh, patient. It can be also used uh, for regrowing limbs. Um, they, they think where the vein ball will not die, so they you can connect that by modeling the extent that are uh, limbs. Then also from things and uh, soldiers, you can actually uh, get their uh, skin. Um, it's a regenerative medicine uh, applications. So this research could be directly applied to that. Um, Kind of so these various um, applications, um, only few of many, that uh, HPC uh, large-scale data analysis and uh, trying to come up with next generation um, knowledge discovery um, in this large-scale analysis. So uh, we also do work. Well Training. Um, we are a new student um, that um, come and in that we have various um, IU programs like Future um, that we invite students from our years and they stop by and uh, they will learn new stuff in biology, life sciences, and skills, and genomic analysis, and HPC. And we also do CI seven days at Jake and other places. Actually, what I have today, um, these are my uh, who are working on various projects um, from you know some really design analysis to uh, discovery and also building talent applications. So I train students from genomic science and technology, uh, which is a department uh, uh, in, uh, in the University of Tennessee, and also electrical and science students from both of me as graduated. And we have a program, so I'm open at this point. 